but we're going to go ahead and get started if that's okay with you guys. Um, I'm not going to go into uh, PowerPoint slideshow mode. I'll just click through. Hope that's okay with you guys. Um, okay, so we are going to discuss uh, about me, my crab journey, um, and then we'll talk about the emergencies that could ha possibly happen in your tank. So this is when dis disasters strike. And um, let's see. I don't know what's going on. I think, okay, I'll just ignore that. Okay, so when disaster strike is what you guys are in, the presentation you guys are in. Common problems when caring for hermit crabs and how to prevent, recognize, and deal with them. So we'll talk about me and my crab journey, and then the disasters we'll talk about are include aggression and fighting, shell jacking, escaped hermit crab, um, naked crab, uh, mold fungus, bug takeovers, uh, spilled waters, and floods. Um, emergencies in the house, emergency moves, power, out, power outage, collapsed tunnels, and surface molts. And I'm sure some of you more experienced crab owners will be like, ah, you didn't remember everything. And then I'll say, well, I did post in the group and say, said, please help me remember everything. <laughs> so I don't blame you guys. I blame me. Okay. So about me, I'm a USA Today bestselling author of over 85 titles. Uh, under the name Andrea Pearson, I write fantasy and supernatural thrillers there. And Andrea Kate Pearson, I write sweet romance under that name. And some of you might remember a few months ago, I posted in the gr group saying I was writing a book that about a character who's going to be getting hermit crabs. And I asked for suggestions on names and I got some really fun ones. Uh, no, I'm not going to tell you guys what they are because <laughs> uh, that's not the point of this, this chat. But thank you so much, everybody, for helping me come up with those her uh, hermit crab names. Uh, and yes, that was me, Trisha. I'm an artist and a musician, and I'm married to an artist and a musician. We have three kids. We homeschool them. I'm a hermit crab enthusiast, and life is super hectic and chaotic because um, I'm a, you know, I run a business, and I got regular writing deadlines, and then kids I homeschool, and we recently bought it. Well, we bought our house a year ago, and it's needed a lot of work. Uh, it's a new house that was not well maintained, and so we've had to do a lot of work in the yard and in the house, and it's just there's so much going on right now that, uh, yeah. <laughs> So grateful for Mary for reminding me about things coming up and just general reminders on Facebook. Okay, my crab journey. Uh, I got my first hermit crabs in June of 2020. Uh, I spent weeks, weeks before that. So I started researching hermit crabs probably in February of that year. And I just read up on Crab Street Journal. I, I joined the Facebook group and I watched, I, geez, I watched um, Crab Central Station my kids knew the names of everybody in that show and my nine-year-old um hold on world created a youtube channel because of darcy and faith so we watched it all the time anyway so i continued researching i got my first hermit crabs in june of 2020 i actually adopted them i did not want to buy them from a pet shop um so i adopted them from somebody who was selling them on the on the local classifieds and uh, I continued researching after that. I own six hermit crabs, including two captive bred babies from Mary. And I have a 90 gallon tank. Um, so disclaimer, each of these topics could take a full presentation. And if I'm not mistaken, I think at least one or two of them is covered in a full presentation uh, during the conference this, this uh, week, but this year. But I wanted to give an overview of common problems that could happen and just a brief overview and then give you some resources to continue researching. So we're going to discuss why the problems happen, um, how to recognize them, how to resolve them, how to pre and then how to prevent them. And like I said, we're going to go fast and we'll take, I'll take questions at the end. Go ahead and stick them in the chat. I ate a snack before starting, but go ahead and stick them in the chat as you have them. And then at the pre end of the presentation, I will go all the way back up to the chat and I will, um, scan through quickly. If you have a question, put question, the word question in front of it, just so I can find them easily. Uh, and then I'll also have my slides available. So if you want to have my slides after, that's fine too. Okay, so what is a disaster? Uh, it's something that stresses out even experienced hermit crab owners. And I've, I mean, talking to hermit crab owners, people who've had them for like 10 years, they still panic when it even... Even when they've had hermit crabs for a long time, they still panic when things happen. So it's something that is life-threatening to your hermit crab. And the first one we're going to talk about is aggression and fighting. And Jenna says she was homeschooled. I was homeschooled too. 
So I'm carrying on that tradition. Okay, aggression and fighting. Uh, why it happens. So you might have a setup that's bad. You have new or threatened crabs, uh, unfamiliar, unfamiliar territory, uh, not enough protein, not enough shells. I'm trying to remember what I meant by unfamiliar territory. I think if like if you throw things, you switch things up in the tank, uh, put them in a new tank, in a new setting, new situation, all of that. I think that's what I mean. Um, and then not enough shells. <clears throat> and then occasionally you'll have a jerk of a crab with PMS. And I'm sorry to say that, but some crabs just scream at people and at other crabs. Um, and I've had that happen even in perfect settings. Um, and I'm going to, I've got a little story right there, the leaf story. Um, so right after we moved into this house, I had a hermit crabs in a temporary setup in this big, I don't remember how big it was. It's a big plastic tote. And I'd before all of that, I knew that they'd be in there for probably three or four months while we were moving. And so I drilled holes through the plastic tote and I zip tied um, jute rope all the way throughout. And so they had things to climb on on the walls themselves. And I want it because you don't have a lot of floor space in that. And I had my six hermit crabs in there. Actually, I had seven at that time because I did have a hermit crab baby, captive bred baby die after we moved. Um, but... <clears throat> So I had them inside this tote. They'd been in that tote for three months. We were in the new house. I hadn't yet had time to set up the, the crab tank because I have little kids and had to get them settled first. And uh, I noticed that they were fighting. And you, when you have crabs for a while, you recognize when they're fighting. And I'll go over that, how to recognize it in a bit. But I knew they were fighting. And I was like, okay, so what are they upset over? And I realized that I'd put in a bunch of leaf litter into the crab tank and it was all gone uh, like less than a day later and there's this little tiny piece left and they were all squabbling hi genie all squabbling over that little tiny piece of leaf and that leaf by the way was from genie <laughs> the leaves i got and i was just like okay so it's uh so i put a bunch more leaves in there into that temporary tote and they left each other alone after that and i'm like you know they just they had no reason to, I mean, no reason under the regular setup rules. Like it wasn't a heat or humidity and it wasn't, uh, it wasn't the water and it wasn't the food. It was because they wanted more leaves. And, and sometimes you just have to recognize that it's not going to be something that you're going to be able to predict all the time. Uh, it's just kind of random sometimes. So, um, <clears throat> okay. How to recognize uh, crabs will have their claws open. That's the number one sign. Um, the easiest sign to look for when you, to know if a crab is stressed is its claw will be open, the big claw. Um, and they'll be pestering each other. They might be rocking shells. They'll be pinching or grabbing the other crab. I mean, you'll see your crabs will have antenna fights, you know, little antenna wars where they go like this and sometimes they'll flick each other or push each other, but then they leave each other alone. But if this continues and it looks aggressive where you're worrying about like they're gripping each other's limbs. This is a bad situation, right? So they're agitated. It's a different behavior from mating behavior. Mating behavior, for those who need to know, it's called guarding. It's gentle. Uh, it's calm. The claws are closed. Uh, sometimes the female's claw will be open if she's like, get away from me, dude. Um, <clears throat> it's not, they're not aggressive though. So the male will be kind of holding on, gently holding onto the shell of the female and he's not doing aggressively. He's not Pinch, pinching her or pushing her or rocking her shell. He's just hanging out. And basically what the, why he's doing that is so that other male crabs don't come near because he's like, this is my claim. Right. And so that she has a chance to accept him. And, uh, one of my favorite videos that is on the YouTube channel for the crab street journal was when, uh, this poor little female hermit crab, this guy would like, wouldn't leave him her alone. He's just following her all over the place. And she finally was able to sneak away. And I think she snuck away by changing shells. <laughs> and he was like, wait, where'd she go? It was funny. So go look that one up. Um, <clears throat> okay. So Stacy, yes. <laughs> um, how to resolve this. You separate the crabs first and sometimes that's not enough. So separate and put the aggressor near smelly foods. Sometimes again, that's not enough though. So you would need to separate and put the aggressor in the shell shop with rinsed shells. And I would do like primed water, that's salt water. So rinse them out, stick them in there and, um, and then put the aggressor in there. You can also, if that does not work, you can also put the aggressor in the water pool, which is the ultimate insult in my opinion to crabs because the, I've never had to go past that. I've done all of these things and the last step has been putting the crab in the pool and I've had to do that a couple times and I've never had to go back because like I've never had to go on past that because they're like, okay, I'm, I, I get the hint now. But if they do continue aggressing, being aggressive, aggressive towards each other, you can put them in a timeout 
So the one that's doing the aggressiveness, uh, put him or her in a container with a rate, like, so a regular, con like a container, sorry, a, a container in your regular tank. So one of those critter keepers, they have holes in them. Um, inside that, you'll want to put food and a little bit of sand, or you could even put a lot of sand in there if they just want to go under the sand and play, you know, hang out, and they're not able to do that in the main tank. Um, some sh shells to put to choose from if that's the problem. And then water. The water doesn't need to be a big pool. You just need to have a water uh, source for them to get because they're only going to be in there for a couple of days and just see what he's doing in there or she my most aggressive crabs are all girls um see what she's doing in there and being you know how she's acting in there and maybe you'll be able to figure out during those couple of days what what the problem was um and then you can take them out and reintroduce them that one into the main tank and monitor after that you'll want to monitor i don't know how long i would say a couple of days um you can keep a camera on it, actively monitor for at least half an hour, just see maybe an hour, just see how they behave and then keep a camera on it and check on it periodically. Uh, sometimes crabs are sneaky though. So that's why I recommend a crab, uh, a camera. Okay. So how to prevent proper conditions. And you're going to hear this a lot in this presentation. So I've got um, the basics of hermit crab care. So if you're not sure what the proper conditions are, you can go there. And then Crab Central Station also has a video. And then they have a video specifically on aggression right there that you can go and watch. So, but basically make sure the substrate is the way it needs to be sandcastle consistency with the proper ratio of sand to cocoa fiber. Um, and then the food, you're offering them plenty of proteins and um, proteins that you can offer them a lot of different proteins. They will eat a lot of different kinds of proteins, but you want to make sure you're offering a lot of protein that comes from the ocean that they would find naturally in their own, in their own habitat. Um, water, salt, and fresh. And um, heat and humidity are correct. You've got enough shells for them and the correct sizings. Uh, and the lighting, you're offering them plenty of lighting during the day and turning it off, all lighting all off at night. And then again, play, pay attention, my leaf story. Uh, you don't know exactly what's causing the problems. Just pay attention to what they are near, maybe when they keep fighting, all of that. Um, give me a second. Okay, you guys can hear me? Am I good to keep going? Okay, so shell jacking. Uh, a lot of this, the aggression is because of shells. Uh, hermit crabs, be jealous, yo. And I, yep, that's where I got crabs be jealous, yo. <laughs> so they really do get jealous. I know I'm being a little flippant in that, but crabs really do get jealous. My very first um, captive bred baby that I got from Mary, uh, he, I named him Grouchy. He sat in the shell shop. He tried on a new shell every five to 10 minutes. And he just sat there for hours and just tried them on and tried them on and tried them on and tried them on. And anytime one of the other baby hermit crabs came near, he would fight with them. And I was like, I don't know. I, he just eventually got over it because I had, I mean, I had like 50 shells for him in there. I was like, I'm like, I can't get anything better, but I did have to separate him a couple times with the other ones. I think it was just the stress of moving. He was like, uh, this is not where I'm expected to be. So, um, he eventually got over that, but he was seriously jealous of the other baby crabs. He even caught, he was even kind of aggressive towards the big ones, but that didn't last long because, uh, Neptune's my biggest crab and she just kind of flicked him with her but, and he was like, okay, not doing that again. <laughs> um, but you need to have plenty of options in the current size so they don't try to steal their tank mate's shells. And then you need to have three to five options in the current size and the next size up. Uh, and then you want to have it be correct openings D versus O, and I'll go over that in just a bit. But gen crabs are generally good natured and they're good clan members. What are they called when they're in a group, a group of clubs, crabs? I don't know. Um, but they will out in the wild, they'll work together to get shells. And when they're trying to steal, they, it's because they feel desperate and we want to prevent that. I have a notification over here. One day replays are up. Yay. Okay. So the reason they fight over shells is because they feel a consortium. Thank you. Um, okay. So <laughs> Neptune and Saturn. Yeah. Neptune, my six-year-old named Neptune, Neptune, uh, when he was three and a half, <laughs> because he's been obsessed. He is still obsessed with Neptune, and it's been two years, two and a half years since then. Anyway, okay, so um, how to recognize. So the crabs, crabs are going to be trying to take each other, take the other crab out of that shell. They'll rock, they'll push, That the general aggressive behavior that I mentioned. Um, the attacked crab will generally either try to get away, but in, what I've noticed most of the time is the, uh, the attacked crab will hide in its shell and uh, the aggressor is paying extra attention to the shell. So it's not necessarily the crab in it 
every time, but a lot of the time it's the shell. And so you'll recognize, okay, so this is like, they're rocking. They want this, they want the shell. And then again, those big claws will be open. <clears throat> okay. So how to resolve. So follow the steps for aggress the aggressive crab by separating them. And then you're going to need to fix your shell situation immediately. If you don't already have shells, and then um, if you're ordering shells, you're going to want to separate those crabs until the shipment comes and keep that. You can either keep them in the same tank with the aggressor in the container with the necessary items and keep that container on hand because you will need it for other emergencies. Or you can keep it in separate tanks, but you want to have them, both of them in a correct setup. Let's see. Okay. How to prevent. Um, Okay, so keep enough shells on hand, like I've said, in the correct size, plus one side up, size up, so an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch. And then also, you want to keep on different types and different weights of shells. Not every crab likes the same thing. So I, I got my hands on a Mexican Turbo, and all my crabs just love that thing. So I bought a ton more, and all of my crabs are in Mexican Turbos. Not one of them want to be in the tapestry, the polish, you know, the really pretty ones that have the cool designs on them, like turtles and dolphins. None of them want to be in those, which is aggravating because my biggest hermit crab neptune should have changed shells a long time ago but she refuses to uh, it took her three months to change out of her painted shell too so she just likes her little spots so exotic crabs are usually d openings purple pinchers are usually o openings some crabs are weird and will gravitate some towards something uncommon or unexpected unexpected that hasn't happened to me yet um kind of grateful all of my crabs have been happy with the shells i've been offering them i haven't offered them any of my bigger ones any of the d openings and I hope I don't have to deal with that until I get exotic crabs, but <laughs> jerks. Yes. Yeah. Crabs are jerks. Yeah. The, the Mexican, the bigger ones love the tapestries too. That's really good to know. I've been wanting to put my tapestries back in. Ken actually recommended I do that, but I haven't had the time to pull them out and wash them and put them in, but I will. Um, okay. So, uh, naked crab, why it happens. So stress moving tanks, moving, taken out of the tank too frequently. I have seen that happen in the Facebook group and then post purchase syndrome. So crabs that you bring home and they leave their shell because they're stressed. So it could also be because of bad, better conditions. So if you have food that you're not, you're not offering the right kinds of food or the food you're offering is moldy or bad, um, water, heat, humidity, et cetera, those kinds of things or shell jacking. So the shell was stolen by another crab. And I know I've heard that some crabs will survive from that, but sometimes they won't. So that's very unfortunate. Okay. Uh, how to recognize, well, um, your crab will be out of its shell. <laughs> you will have a naked crab. That's how you know you have a naked crab. Um, but you can also sometimes find an empty shell that, you know, a crab was in at one point. Uh, and that's usually going to be away from other shells because most crabs will, they'll leave that shell that they're in and they'll go into the next one as soon as they can. So they'll do it right next to each other because they understand that, that their abdomen, it's like soft and they, their instinct is to protect it. And so they go into the other one as quickly as they can. Okay. So finding an empty shell is a cause for concern. And it generally, I mean, it's not going to always mean an emergency is on hand, but you want to figure out uh, why you have an empty shell where you knew a crab was in it before. Um, sometimes crabs will drag them all over the place and count your crabs. It's kind of hard when they go down for molting and you don't want to just dig, um, dig a crab up just because you found an empty shell that it doesn't necessarily mean that the crab left the shell, but just keep that in mind. Okay. How to resolve. You'll want a container big enough for the crab and three shells, and then you'll put in a tiny bit of primed water and the old shell for the first hour. So you'll put the little crab in there. You'll carefully scoop it out of the tank with a plastic a uh, spoon or serving utensil. And um, let's see, you have to be, when it's a naked crab, you have to be really, really care careful because um, the spoon can cause damage to it. So, and I'll go over that again a little bit later, but scoop it out very, very carefully, place it in the container with some, a little bit of primed water and the old shell for about an hour. And then you add more shells after that hour, if it didn't accept its old shell, um, three shells, you know, um, and then you put it in the container. Like I said, you want to cover the container, make it so it's dark and then so that other crabs aren't going to bother it. And so it's not stressed by its environment. So it's just in this little dark enclosed space. Don't give it any food. Don't bother it for a full hour straight. The whole goal here is to get the crab back into its shell ASAP. Um, there are certain situations. Okay. This is not a baby hermit crab. 
chat. Okay, we won't get into that. Okay, so if this doesn't work, post in the main group. And honestly, I would post in the group right after you get the crab into the container either way, because having the admins who are not emotionally panicked right now, like you are on your side and helping you figure things out is really valuable. If it's a captive bred baby, contact Mary Acres. There you go. Um, let's see, or post in the captive bred baby Facebook group. Mary, which would you prefer people do if you're still in here? Would you rather they post in the captive bread group first or reach out to you or Darcy if they got them from Darcy? I mean, go ahead and put that in there and I'll be watching for that. I should have asked you ahead of time, but it's CrabCon week and things are stressful and, he and hectic. And Stacy, if you know the answer too, if you're still in there. Okay, so how to prevent this? You want to have a good setup. Again, if you're not seeing the pattern here, uh, almost all emergencies happen when something is off in the setup. And then how to prevent when things are perfect, because sometimes setups are perfect and your hermit crabs are still going to stress. Um, beyond the regular, that it is a hard one. Uh, something may trigger it. In my case, it was moving too much stress for my little baby. Um... Okay, so Stacy's saying, so search search the group first. So yes, search the group first and then go beyond that, whatever, figure out if there's nothing in there that's like your situation. Um, crabs don't live forever, unfortunately. Sometimes what happens to them before you purchase might be too much. And um, I did have a, an, a crab I adopted from another person end up passing away, which was just heartbreaking to me because um, you don't know, I know that she kept them in calcium sand. And, but the crab didn't die for a few months. And so I was like, yes, I got him over that. But you, you have no idea what they've been through and how long they're going to hang on and, or even how old they are. Not every crab ages and grows at the same rate. So you, it might, they might think it was a baby crab on the, the beach when they kidnapped it or crab napped it, but it could be an older crab that's reaching the end of its life cycle anyway. But, um, having your crab, your hermit crab tank in the perfect setting will help you mitigate a lot of the possible disasters. Let's see. Um, okay. So mold and fungus. This is my, my next thing here. Okay. Why it happens mold. Uh, usually humidity is too high or wood and moldable items are directly on the sub like food, um, food left on the sub directly will mold, um, food left in too long also molds and then fresh foods mold a lot faster than dry foods. So funguses, um, spores enter the tank through an outside object. Uh, it can be wood and leaves, et cetera, that weren't carefully treated. can also come on a shelf from new crabs. That's not as likely, but it is possible. So the recommendation is if you get new crabs, if they are not from captive bred sources, even if they come from somebody else who's in the group, you might you need to quarantine them for a little while. Um, if you adopt them and you know they came from bad situations, they need to go through the PPS tank situation method or whatever anyway. Um, again, unless they are a captive bred baby. Hold on a second. Okay, so fungus spores can also come from bugs. Again, not as likely, but it's still possible. And I've seen the recommendation on Facebook is to breed out a couple of generations of bugs in a separate tank to make sure you're not introducing pathogens. You can't freeze bugs when you want them to be alive. I mean, I don't know if you know this, but boiling them, freezing them, baking them, it kills them. So, but if you keep them in a separate tank um, and let them breed for a couple of generations and then switch them into the main tank, that's not a bad idea. Yes, isopods. Um, <clears throat> springtails and isopods is what I'm talking about. So uh, bugs, I'm not saying like bugs that like flies or something like, you know, maggots, something like that. Um, anyway, so you want to make sure that... Um, you are not introducing bugs other than isopods or springtails to your tank anyway. Okay, so how to uh, recognize there's going to be mold on the food, um, in the dirt, on the wood, hemp, wicker, etc., things like that. Um, something that I've noticed in the group, uh, some people, like depending on where you were raised, your background, whatever, they won't recognize that black can be, like mold can be black or it can be green or it can be white. Mold comes in all sorts of different colors. So uh, figure out, educate yourself on like what kind of mold grows on an apple versus what kind of mold grows on a wood and different kinds of wood. Um, <clears throat> if you have a fungus, you'll see weird things growing. You won't know where they came from. And so you can also post pictures in the group and say, hey, this is growing in my in my tank. What is it and how do I get rid of it? Okay, so how to resolve if it's mold, you want to remove fresh food before it molds uh, within 12 to 24 hours, depending on the conditions where you leave. And what I mean by that is if you live in a super humid location, 
the fresh fruit is already on its way out. So once you put it in the tank, it's going to be even in, in more humidity, it's going to mold faster. Uh, in my situation, I can usually put fresh food in the tank for 24 hours and not have it mold, but that's because I live in a really dry deserty area. Um, <clears throat> Remove dry food when you see mold. And some dry food particles are too small to see it, which makes it challenging. Uh, you can just change out your food frequently. Not as frequently as fresh, but you're going to, you'll figure out after a while, you'll learn which foods mold quickly. And then remove the wood and the leaves that are molding. So for a fungus, um, this one's a lot more challenging than mold. Uh, you're going to, you have to dig it out. And sometimes it requires changing your entire sub, which sucks. But uh, you're going to want to take care when you're digging because it could spread spores very easily. And if you, and this is why it might require changing your entire sub because uh, it continues to grow and it continues like it sends roots down that are really hard to see and they can go deeper than you expect. And the best situation is to prevent it, of, of course, if possible. So how to prevent freeze all items for 24 plus hours. I've seen people say for at least two days bake safe items you know you're not going to bake plastic um, bake safe items for three plus hours at a lower temp around 200 maybe 300 if the object can handle it and keep an eye on it and then soak items in heavily salted water for 12 plus hours and i'm not saying like the salt that you would put give to your hermit crabs like more salt than that and then clean your plastics and your glass etc with vinegar lots and lots of vinegar make sure you rinse it thoroughly when you're done <clears throat> Okay, I've done all of this with the same piece of wood and it still grew mold. Uh, so my resolution was to keep wood and moss and leaves off of the substrate, completely off of the substrate. Uh, I have them up in my current take high up where the you know, hermit crabs can still nibble on it and they can still climb on it, but it doesn't mold up there. Also research the types of wood best for a humid location. If the, th if the trees thrive in dry settings, they probably won't be good in a tank. And that was what happened with me. Um, there is a lot of wood that is safe for hermit crabs, but it doesn't necessarily, that does not necessarily mean it will actually be okay in a hermit crab tank. So for example, my parents uh, cut down a bunch of trees. We live here in Utah, it's second dry state in the country. And I put some of that wood in there and it didn't matter where I put it in the hermit crab tank, it molded. And so when I got, and Choya is a little different, by the way. Choya is like, it's a desert plant, but it it hasn't molded for me uh, nearly as much as like the, I can't remember what it was I put in there, whatever it was my parents had in their yard. Um, anyway, so if it's in a moldy, like a humid area, you know, if you get it from Genie, which is where I got a lot of my wood from, none of that wood has ever molded. Yeah, Stacy says Choya is really mold resistant. It's a, It's amazing. It's super awesome looking and hermit crabs love it and it's fun to watch them on it. Okay, escaped hermit crab. <coughs> okay, so driftwood that's been soaked a long, long time and then dried is usually more mold resistant. And Jeannie has ne never has mold on wood. <coughs> okay, so escaped hermit crab. Why it happens? A lid to tank left open. That's kind of obvious. Uh, crab sees an opportunity to explore and takes it. Or, and I thought this was really funny, Cat Christy in the Facebook group said that her cat opened the lid after she forgot to latch it shut, which I thought was really kind of funny. Uh, hijacker, this one I would say is going to um, be the one that even experienced crab uh, people could experience. I don't leave my crab tank lid open unless I <clears throat> am only stepping away for two seconds to go put something down and come back and there's no crabs anywhere near that opening. <clears throat> Man, I'm really struggling today. I'm sorry about that. Okay, so this happened to me, a hijacking crab. Uh, I had a crab clinging to the underside of one of the mesh... Um, <clears throat> What is it? Oh, I have water here. Give me a sec. That's what I was saying when I muted myself. So anyway, so the mesh, <clears throat> the mesh, um, you know, the, the, whatever you call it, that they climb in, in and out of the pool. He was clinging to the bottom of it and it was a tiny little hermit crab. It wasn't my, one of my captive breads, but it was about this big with including shell just hanging onto the bottom of it. And I didn't notice he was there until, so I took the pools into the bathroom. I put them on the counter in there and then I went back to pull the food out and I heard a thud and I was like, oh crap. I knew what, right away what it was. And I ran into the bathroom and this poor little crab was like, what the heck am I on? He landed on a mat and was like, yeah. Anyway, so, um, <clears throat> So make sure you check everything before you take it out of the crab tank or after you take it out of the crab tank. So wood and decorations, shells, triple check shells before you store, store, boil, or clean them. 
Um, just to case in point, one of my hermit crab babies adopted a shell that was like this big when it should have been in a shell that was like this big. And when I picked that shell up, that little body, I mean, it didn't matter what I did. I could not see that little baby inside there at all. And the only reason I knew it was in there was because, um, it was because I saw the shell move. And so I put it back inside the tank upside down. You know, you put it in there upside down. That's how you know if there's a crab in there and put a little bit of water in there. And if it flips over, then there's a hermit crab. It's like, why'd you put water on me? <clears throat> okay. How to recognize you have a hermit crab that has escaped. You hear a sound like I did. Um, you have a hermit crab missing after you did something like left the tank open or you moved objects, etc. cetera. Um, luckily, if you see one trying to escape, they move, usually move slowly enough where you can catch them. Not, not always. Sometimes they're, sometimes they can be really fast. Um, did it go down to molt though? Obviously you need to figure out if that's the case. Uh, so if you keep a camera on the tank, then you'll be able to know. And that is the easiest way to know if a hermit crab went down to molt. And then again, like I said earlier, put the shells upside down with water in them. If the shell flips over, it has a hermit crab in it. Okay. So let's see what, what time is it? Okay. I've got half an hour left, right? Uh, we're making good time. Maybe, maybe we're only halfway through. Okay. I'll keep going. Okay. So how to resolve if you can't find it in the tank, then search everywhere. I mean, do what, you know, you're going to, you're going to search, right? Um, you're going to look around legs, carpet, furniture, dark places, warm and moist places nearby. So bathrooms, kitchens underneath the fridge, um, edges of a room, you'll look around, you'll need to look around water and food dishes for other pets. These hermit crabs are going to panic. They're going to look for safety and they're going to look for a source of food and water. Um, <clears throat> if you still can't find it, then put a newspaper or tinfoil somewhere near the edge of the room towards the evening. And, or whenever you think about it, you don't necessarily want to wait till the end of the evening, but not, they are nocturnal creatures, right? So put something smelly in the center of the newspaper or the tinfoil like sardines, or I know popcorn is another one that hermit crabs love. Just something that, that is going to catch their attention. You can also add a little bit of water in a, like a little lid for a two liter or something like that. Put that there too. And then grab a flashlight, sit down, turn off the lights and then wait and be quiet for a very long time. And it can take a long time, but when you hear the sound, then you shine the light and grab the crab, right? And then of course this link here up, oh, by the way, pretty much all of these have links in the crab street journal. I just didn't have room. Like I didn't have room to put things in here. So, um, if you have questions about these, you can also go to crab street journal. <clears throat> Okay. How to prevent, keep your tank lid securely shut, uh, use fresh press and seal. The old stuff loses its stickiness. Eventually keep weights on your lid, um, put latches or an openers on them. And then when it comes to kids and pets, keep them higher than you would expect, especially for kids with a cat. Um, most cats can't open lid latches. So, <laughs> um, just secure your lid as much as you can. Okay. Bug takeover. When, it, why it happens, bugs are introduced to the habitat inadvertently or on purpose. How to recognize, um, I don't know how to say this, but you'll know you have bugs because there will be bugs. <laughs> um, uh, also your food will disappear much quicker than usual. You'll, you'll see tracks and trails in the sand. And sometimes you can see their poop depending on the size of the bug. How to resolve it. If it's isopods, um, and you put them in there on purpose, then you can place cardboard in the tank on the top of the, the sub. And the next morning you remove it and then shake, they'll be on the bottom of it. Um, herma, uh, crabs like to hang out in the bottom of stuff. Think crabs, isopods like to hang out in the bottom of things. Um, and this, I want to know if Stacy agrees with this still. We had a conversation about this on Facebook, like about a year ago, maybe a month, maybe a few months ago where um, we had somebody who is, who works with bugs professionally. And she said, don't put the excess outside. Even if you got them from outside, she said it can introduce things from the tank to the native species in the neighbor area. And that it could cause the native space species to change. I don't know if that's still, if you agree with that still Stacy, or if, um, if you, if, cause the, pr the previous belief was if you got it from outside, you can reintroduce them to outside. Um, <clears throat> if that's not accurate, then that's good to know. Um, if I ever got isopods, my, I always err on the side of caution. So I would not put them outside. I would probably feed them to another animal or freeze them. Um, I just, yeah. Okay. So you can also slice a potato in half. You can place it in the tank raw side up. And then, um, the next morning remove and shake the isopods into a separate container. Uh, okay. So Stacy says, I agree with her statement. It makes sense. We don't allow other creatures to be released outside. So the isopods should not either. <clears throat>
Okay, so if it's an unwanted bug, so ants or other critters, um, you got to scoop out the affected dirt, keep keep the dirt off of the sub, um, keep food off of the sub. I don't know. I'm just this, I've never had this problem, thank goodness. But from what I've seen, when I've researched, you might have to start off from scratch if, um, completely, especially if it's ants. Ants dig. That's what they do. They dig down, they have nests. So if you get ants, you might have to start over completely from scratch, which is unfortunate. So Tricia says moist sphagnum moss works well as a gather all for big colonies. And I've had, I've seen people who will, um, they'll have a separate tank where they keep all of their isopods and they'll occasionally put some into the main tank, not enough for their main tank to get overrun. And I thought that was a really good idea. Um, I did put um, isopods in my tank at one point, but they disappeared. And I think they got eaten alive, those poor things. <laughs> and it's been, it's been years. It's been two years since we did that. So they're not there anymore. Um, and then double stick, double sided sticky tape. You can catch them when they come up <clears throat> the ants. Okay. So how to prevent bugs. Um, I'll, I'll go down to the bottom one first. If it's isopods or springtails, thin your herd regularly. And so potato and cardboard suggestion, but if it's anything else, you freeze, boil, bake, soak everything before putting it in a tank. You don't want, I mean, you're going to end up with bugs in your tank. This is, this is part of being living in on this earth. There are bugs everywhere. You can't prevent it completely, but there are some bugs that you do not want in your tank. Um, and so freeze and boil, bake, soak everything before you put it in the tank, seal up your tank completely. Use Vaseline on the legs and the supports of the tank to prevent ants from climbing. Um, put the tank far away from the location where the ants enter the house. So if you know there's an area where ants go all the time, put your tank away from that. Um, so our tank is up here on the second floor in our house. We don't generally have an ant problem here, um, <clears throat> which I'm grateful for, but uh, I keep my tank on the second floor of the house. Hermit crabs will eat them alive. Yeah, my, my isopods got eaten alive. Okay, change your food regularly. And don't feed crabs uh, foods that ants like. That one's tough. Um, and again, you might have to, I hope you don't have to enter the reactive, you know, where you're reacting to the problem, but do everything you can to prevent it. Okay, spilled water or a flood. Why it happens can be accidental um, you, from knocking over your water pools. I've done that before. I've actually jostled it while I'm putting it back in the tank. It kind of jostled and water spilled. Um, too much condensation on the sides of the tank, too much humidity in the dirt, misting. These, these things right here, guys, these are bad. Uh, this one has a caveat. We'll get to that in a minute, but these do not do this. Um, misting, spraying, fogger, do not put those, do not use them in your tank. Um, I've had a spray. I do live in Utah, but I have not had to spray. My tank has been set up for a full year now and I, I, it is still at complete can sand castle consistency and I haven't had to spray. And that is because I got the wa the, the sub to sand castle consistency, um, before I put any decorations in. I mixed that sucker up. I got it full. Like I think I said in my last in our last thing, the baby hermit crab chat, I had to add five gallons of water to my hermit crab tank to get it to sandcastle consistency. And um, that's a 90 gallon, so eight bags or nine bags of sand. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Um, okay, so sponges and water, don't use the sponges that they give you that come with the hermit crabs. You need to use 100% natural sponges. They need to be changed out every single day. Um, let's see, I'm trying to remember what else there is about them. Uh, that's all I can remember right now. But um, people do use sponges still. The hermit crabs, I, if they're natural, 100% natural, the hermit crabs will munch on them a little bit. Um, but they cr increase humidity in a tank. And so if you don't, if humidity is an issue, don't use sponges because that will increase the humidity. So take those out, even the natural ones. Let's see. Also, it could happen if your tank is not big enough. It's harder to, main to maintain humidity in a 10-gallon tank. Um, so how to recognize you'll have pools of water in your sub, you'll have mold or algae in the sub below the surface. Um, when you touch the sand, your hand will come away, your hand will come away moist. So it's not that you can't like, you can't see standing water, but you're wet, you know, <clears throat> dry moss helps humidity to go down to right. Only if you're switching it out, if you keep it in there, it actually starts to hold the humidity. And, um, when back in the beginning, when I was trying to get my humid humidity levels up higher, I added moist moss. 
And if you keep the moss in there for a while, it does. It'll soak up the moisture and it will contribute to the moisture. If you're swapping it out regularly, it will keep the humidity down. Um, okay, so bacterial blooms. Let's see. Um, I don't even know what a bacterial bloom looks like. It's really hard to tell. It Floods don't happen too often in the Facebook group anymore. And so it's hard to, it was hard to get pictures and ideas of what they look like. Resolve. If your sub is overly saturate, saturated, you might, you probably will need to start over from scratch. It's, it's going to be really hard to resolve it. But one thing you can do is if you don't have any crabs down, uh, molting, then remove sections of sand, dry it in the oven, and then carefully mix it back in with the saturated sands. You might have to remove the crabs from the tank to do that. Um, if the crab or if the main tank is completely full flooded, you're going to want to take, I mean, you're going to be starting over from scratch, basically. Put your crabs in a temporary tank, remove the substrate, toss it, because um, I, I, you could start it from scratch, clean that thing. I just personally, if it's got all that crap growing in it from a flood, I would get rid of it completely. Um, clean your tank thoroughly with vinegar and rinse, rinse thoroughly. You can use bleach if you want to, but I, we don't use bleach here. We use vinegar just because bleach is such a, it's, it's a dangerous substance. Vinegar is not as dangerous, but you can use vinegar bleach first. But after that, you're going to want to use vinegar because vinegar will kill off the bleach basically. And then either way, rinse thoroughly. Let it air dry for at least 24 hours. Um, clean the items in your tank, including the shells. Boil in salt water after making sure the shells are empty. And then, of course, there's instructions on Crab Street Journal. Let's see. How much more do we have? Okay. We have 15 minutes to go. I can go as long as I want to go, though. So um, I don't want to go too long, though, because people have things they need to do. Okay, how to prevent cover the pools that cover your pools if you're using bubblers you're gonna like what i did with mine i've got a container i cut the lid in half i've got the bubblers going through a hole here and so it the splashes are all here with the lid and then this half is where the hermit crabs enter so cover your pools that have bubbles bubblers in them give me a second i'm gonna get a drink um Start with dry sand if you're in, in the in normal parts of the world, or if you're in a desert like me, add brackish water to the substrate substrate until it reaches sand castle consistency. Brackish water is water that has salt in it. <clears throat> Don't spill your pools. <laughs> Wipe down your condensation daily and crack the lid if the humidity gets to about 85 or higher. That's that's where I like to keep it, is below 85. Okay, emergency move um emergency in the house power outage why it happens storms excessive heat excessive cold family and friend emergencies job changes fires etc how to recognize kind of obvious on these right here um so i'm going to keep going how to resolve move your crabs to a temporary tank if you're leaving the house and take them with and um so like if you have if you have to leave the house for more than 24 hours put them into a temp tank and move move them with you. Um, if you, and, and that's in case like the power's gone out, if it's too hot or if it's too cold, or whatever, you know that those crabs, if they left are left behind, they most likely won't make it. If you have molting crabs, you might need to dig them up. Um, if you're not going to be gone that long, they might be safe while molting just because the temperature doesn't fluctuate as quickly in the, in the substrate while they're molting. Um, follow these right here. If you have to dig them up, that's uh, relocating new home. There's instructions on how to dig up molting hermit crabs. Use emergency blankets if the house gets cold. Um, you can also keep insulated blankets on hand. Bottles wrapped in, in a hand towel full of hot water. That'll help the air stay warm enough. Um, also make sure that your tank is fully sealed. So if it gets too hot or too cold and you know it's going to be resolved in a few hours, make sure they've got all the food they need, all the water they need, fresh all of that stuff, and then don't open the tank again until the situation has been resolved. Okay, how to prevent. You're going to keep a temporary tank on hand with everything you need and then transfer the crabs when necessary you can, so you can go quickly. You just grab them, stick them in the tank, and then continue on. Um, have emergency supplies available for your crabs. So a go bag with dry food, prime, empty water bottles, or sorry, water pools, instant ocean moss leaves, etc. And then like a backpack, just keep all that stuff in there. That way you can stick them in the temp tank, grab the backpack and go. And then you don't have to make sure there's food inside that temp tank or anything like that. You'll have it in your backpack. Um, 
keep an emergency blanket you can put over the tank in case of a power outage on hand and then empty water bottles. <clears throat> okay, collapsed tunnel. And then we have surface mold after that. So a collapsed tunnel happens when the substrate is too dry. When you, when you like jostle the tank or you bang it, when you move the tank, um, when you are careless or not careful enough when digging for crabs, and sometimes even perfect digging can result in a collapsed tunnel. Um, it's hard to recognize if there's a tunnel collapse. I, I honestly don't have any suggestions if, unless you moved it. And I mean, I don't know, maybe one of the admins who's in the group right now can tell us how to know if a tunnel has collapsed, maybe the area above it, the sand will collapse down too. I don't know. Um, but if you're digging, you can see the tunnel around the area that collapsed sometimes. How to resolve it, carefully dig out the molten crab as soon as possible. And of course, you have to be careful about it so you don't kill them in the process or injure them in the process. But you, it can suffocate in a collapsed tunnel. So use a small spoon and shift the sand a bit at a time and use the link up here for all of that. Let's see. Um, don't move tanks with crabs. Do not, do not move tanks with crabs in them. If you've got that much dirt, guys, those things are heavy. Don't even try. It's just, it's not good. Don't put the tank in a place where it can be banged or jostled easily. And then teach kids and pets how to be careful around the tank um, and keep the tank in a secure location, which is kind of what I've already said. But um, our tank is in our, in our hallway, but it is on a very wide base. I did not put it on a tank stand. I put it on, on um, very, very solid nightstands that are like thick, thick wood and they're wider than the tank. And um, the tank is 100 gallons or 90 gallons or whatever, and it's very heavy. Even my toddler climbing on it doesn't jostle it one bit, which I don't let them climb on anyway. But so this, you know, smaller tanks are easier to jostle. Okay, surface molts. Um, incorrect setup, uh, post purchase stress. So you just got it from a pet store. It's going to be a, a surf, it could possibly lead to a surface molt. Um, stress crabs, basically. <clears throat> How to recognize you'll have a slight fishy smell. The crab isn't dead. It moves maybe a little. It isn't interested in food. And you can take, if you've got a crab that you're worrying about, and um, you have to be super careful with them, very, very careful with them. But um, you can stick it. What I did with mine was I stuck it inside of some Tupperware and I put it, I took a picture of it. And then like four hours later, I took a picture of it again. And if it's moved in that four hours, even a slight movement, then you know it's still alive. Um, sometimes the crab, oops, crab hanging around on the surface. You might have noticed the crab trying to dig down previously. So it's like stress digging, uh, and it didn't go down and you know, it was trying to dig down. But again, right here, hermit crabs do weird things all the time. Just because the crab hangs out on top or digs a little and then doesn't go down or it sits in one spot lifeless for hours, or even a couple of days, doesn't mean it's surface molting or sick. Crabs are weird as we've already established. Um, how do you know for sure? Post in the Facebook group, um, post a picture of it or do the test. Like I said, so put it in, in a Tupperware and then just see if it moves. Don't give it food. If it's surface molting, it's not going to want food. Um, it needs to, I mean, it might, I don't know. Sometimes they haven't gone far enough in the molt where they can actually use food that will give it strength to get through the molt. But once it starts molting, it needs to eat its exoskeleton. So Okay, so how to resolve safe, safely isolate the crab. If possible, use the two liter bottle tricks. You take a two liter bottle, you cut it off so that the you've got the top portion and you take that top portion and you shove it into the sand all the way down to the bottom. Um, and this is more, this is what you're going to want to do in a tank, like an iso tank or a, um, a PPS tank or a tank that doesn't have super deep sand. Um, like, I don't know, six inches of sand and you know you don't have something down molting. Um, if you don't have a crab molting, then this, then you can do this. Otherwise you're going to want to move it into a separate container in the tank. And again, that's like that critter creep keeper I mentioned earlier is a great one to put a molting crab in. Don't touch the molter. Uh, when you move it, move the sub that is under it's. So if it's on the sub, then you're going to scoop out the sub and then take all of that and put it inside of that separate tank. <clears throat> Make sure the container is safe from other crabs, but has air holds. Uh, if the exoskeleton, if it hasn't fully shed that exoskeleton, put it in with the crab. Um, don't put food or water in there. Leave the crab alone completely during the molting process. It's super interesting and fascinating to watch, but crabs, molting is really stressful on crabs. And the more you look at it and the more you poke at it and stare at it and all that, the more stress it's going to be. 
Um, and then after it's ex the crab is eaten, it's exoskeleton and is hard, move it back to the main take. Main take, but monitor it with the other crabs and learn mating behaviors because when a female crab has finished molting, that's when she's ready to breed. And so just because other crabs are paying attention to her does not mean that they want to eat her or, you know, because crabs smell delicious apparently when they're molting. Um, but it could be because they want to mate with her. So learn mating behaviors. How to prevent it. First off, you need to understand why it happens. So again, stress, problems with the setup. Um, you just purchased it and it's, you know, all of that stuff. You've moved, things like that. Anything that could stress it or cause problems for it. Um, you can prevent these issues by putting all new crabs, not including captive bred crabs, through the PPS method. And I mean new crabs that you adopt or that you buy from a store. Don't buy, adopt. Uh, <laughs> don't buy, don't shop, adopt, whatever. Anyway, so put them all through the PPS method, not including captive bred babies, of course. Maintain safe um, tank with proper settings and research before you move to a different house. You're going to want to make sure you've got all of your ducks in a row when it comes to your crabs. And then also good hermit crab owners are more likely to run into issues during while they are moving. And I'm a good hermit crab owner and I still had a hermit crab die um, <clears throat> after moving. And unfortunately it was one of my captive bred babies, which was very heartbreaking. Okay. In conclusion, even experienced crab owners can have emergencies. So the difference is they know what to do because they've been, they've owned the crabs for a while. They've been re reading up. They've paid attention to the Facebook group. They've spent time on Crab Street Journal and Crab Central Station. And here's the Facebook group link. Um, so be prepared for things to happen. Knowing is half the battle. Read, pay attention, and research. And that is it. I'm going to go ahead and leave that up. If you want the slides, you can send me an email there. And I am going to scroll back up to the top of the chat and I'm muting my, 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 my thingy here so I can clear my throat and cough while I'm doing that. So here we go. comment about her hermit crabs love fighting over katapa leaves katapa katapa is how i say it those were what mine were fighting over no hold on no they're fighting over the oak leaves i got from genie but yes they fight over those too which is kind of funny <coughs> yeah i've got something going on with my throat so kimberly says she's got a bad cough but yeah i'm coughing a ton and sore throat right now it's good good times guys good times Let's see. I'm just scrolling through these. My largest crab is named Saturn. Um, yes. Yeah, so that, that video on YouTube where the hermit crabs line up to take the shell of the guy head. Yep. That's what they do. <clears throat> Let's see. Going through these, just going through looking for questions. Go ahead and post questions if you've got any. Any tips on overheating tanks? Um, okay, so I have lots of different thoughts on that. That's from Allie. Her question was, any tips on overheating tanks? Um, your tank might not be overheating if you have a thermostat. So check, get make sure you have a thermostat. The thermostat will give you the best. It'll put, like, put it down in the center of the tank. So center of the tank, regardless of which way the tank is facing, a couple inches off the sub. And have make sure that your thermometer is right next to it. Uh, I have seen situations where people think their tank is overheating, but they're checking only the back by the heater or only the top where heat rises. So make sure that you actually have accurate settings or accurate um, readings. And then if it is still overheating, you might, you if you have a thermostat, it should control whether the tank is overheating because the thermostat will automatically turn off the heat pad on the back of the tank if it gets too hot. And... Um, if it's still overheating, your thermostat might be broken. You can also downgrade to a smaller heat mat. I generally wouldn't recommend that just because I use, I mean, I've upgraded my tank sizes and I end up using all of those heat mats. Um, <clears throat> but a thermostat should re uh, resolve the issue. 
Um, let's see. Wow, Abby says she had a naked crab underground. Thankfully, he put on a shell immediately after being put in the container. Jeez, man, that's freaky. Um, let's see. <clears throat> Looking for questions. Um, scrolling through question. If a hermit passes during their molt, can that cause molt or fungus? Mold or fungus? Um, I don't know, honestly. Um, I mean, I'm going to say if it's not going to cause fungus, because fungus is something that has to be introduced to the tank. That's something that won't be there unless you introduce it. But mold... Uh, mold comes when creatures are bio, not, not all, okay. Not all things mold. Um, animals, I would say animals don't mold. They deteriorate, which is where the cells in their, in the cells that make up their bodies, um, start like the wall. So that start to break. And so it causes liquid to run out. And I've, I have never heard of an animal itself molding. It's, it's different from the mold that grows. If it does, it's different than the mold that grows on on food. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong about that, but if they pass during their molt, it's not going to cause in my, I don't think it's going to cause problems for your, for your other hermit crabs. Um, and you're not going to want to dig it up anyway. Most of the time, like some crabs can molt for up to a year. So you don't want to go digging for it unless you're moving or something like that. And so I've never heard if a hermit crab caused mold, dying caused mold, but I'm going to say probably not. And it could possibly, I mean, they're going to be surrounded by dirt. That dirt's going to be shifted around by the other hermit crabs. Their body is going to, even if they're in a shell still, it's going to, it's going to, what's the word? Um, evaporate, not really evaporate, but move into the dirt surrounding it, be absorbed by the dirt surrounding it. So I would suggest, I would think that it probably wouldn't, but um, let's see. Is there a question I missed? I feel like I missed a question. Hold on. I was just in San Bernardino County, by the way, um, just this past weekend. That was Allie. Um, questions. Looking here. Choya is mold resistant. Is really mold resistant. I've never had mold on wood. Jeannie's very lucky. Keep candles on my lids. Mm, I love candles. Um, sorry guys, I am still scrolling down and this is thrilling for those of you guys who are watching on the recording. Hi, recording people. <laughs> um, okay. Dry moss helps humidity to go down too, right? Yes. If you're switching it out regularly. Is the algae unsafe? Um, I don't know if there's been any studies on whether it's safe or unsafe, but I think that the uh, Land Hermit Crab Owner Society, their official position is it is unsafe and to keep it out of um, out of the um, area that they live in. Algae in the water is generally unsafe. It usually means that the water is, I don't know. I don't know a whole ton about tanks, but I do know that once there's algae, they off put stuff when they're consuming and it's just it's not safe for animals and bugs out in the ocean that doesn't become a problem because it's a massive and ecosystem where everything gets taken care of they have animals that eat that algae but inside of a little tank um algae would is unsafe so i don't know about the algae and the dirt but i would assume so yes for the same reasons i just said they when they eat stuff they give off stuff that can be harmful for animals and humans okay sorry for my 100 questions lol um, okay. So yeah, thank you guys for coming. I'm getting to the thank you parts. Uh, you're welcome. I'm glad that you guys came. Yeah. Coughing and dry throat. Yep. Um, glad that it was helpful. How are some ways to really battle condensation? I live in Alabama. So the AC is on and my tank is on and my tank. I can wipe down and turn around and condensation is back. I'm so scared. It will eventually flood. I just set up my tank less than a month ago and my sub went and dry per recommendations. Okay, so some ways to battle condensation. 
Um, your tank is only a month old, so condensation happens naturally when a tank is getting adjusted. A lot of people have, have found that once the tank has fully adjusted to being set up, that condensation just eventually goes away. Um, it can happen when the area around it is too, is too cold, so it hits the tank and the tank is warm. That causes the condensation on the inside, and so you can wrap... Um, to really battle condensation. I don't know what you mean by really battle it, but you can wrap the tank with blankets, make sure the air conditioner is not blowing on it. So get vent directors. Um, you, I don't, I know you don't want to hear this, but you could also move the tank to an area of the house that is naturally warmer than other areas. That's what we did with the tank here. Uh, let's see. Um, wipe down the condensation all the time with a dry cloth. Um, and, and, um, you're going to want to, when you start wiping the condensation down, um, re like pull that towel out or the paper towel out frequently. So it doesn't cause water to trickle down into the sub as it gets saturated. Um, but yeah, so it might just take a little bit of time for Kim. This I'm answering Kim's question for Kim, for your tank to, to settle and for the condensation to not be such a big problem. But yes, like Trish, Trisha said, um, dry sphagnum moss, it absorbs. Um, so you can pull, you can put moss in there. Like I was saying earlier, put dry moss in, pull it out, let it dry, uh, put mo new moss and just alternate them over and over again. <clears throat> yeah, that's fine. Um, um, Althea, Althea, um, missed a whole bunch. Couldn't stay awake. Have to watch mine from the beginning. That's totally fine. Um, Let's see. Okay, so Trisha says from her personal experience, they don't mold, they just kind of dissipate. So they they get absorbed into the dirt around them. I'm assuming she's talking about hermit crabs that die while molting. Okay. How are some ways to really battle condensation? Okay, Kim, did I answer that one, um, your question well enough? I got, to, I got to your second question here. So the AC, the AC is on in my tank. I gotta see. Um, unbalanced pH. Gotcha. Oh wait, I may make some kind of tank skirt to keep light away from the sub. How do you keep a permanently isolated land hermit crab happy? We caught her killing another crab. Um, how long have you had, had you had that crab? Um, <clears throat> okay. So, cause sometimes, hmm. Yeah. Sometimes it takes a while for crabs. Like if you had her for only a few months, it takes a while for them to get established and get the, the right food and the right water. Sometimes keeping them isolated for, um, I don't know. I would say if, if this is one that's causing all sorts of problems, every time you reintroduce them, then keep them isolated for a month or two months or three months. Uh, she's not going to, you might have to set up a completely separate crab tank, honestly, if, if you have to keep her permanently isolated, but I've never seen where a crab that was permanent, permanently isolated, meaning, you know, more than a few days wasn't able to be successfully reintroduced into the tank. Um, I think I maybe heard of one person where they just had to have two separate tanks. And I'm, if that's the case, then how do you keep them happy? Um, the same way you would keep a regular, a bunch of other crabs happy. If that crab's unhappy being with other ones and is being aggressive all the time, then maybe it just wants to be happy. So give it lots of things to climb and play on. Uh, are they going to put your video up from last year? I don't know, actually. That's a good question. I had a couple of, I, I did three presentations last year. Um, thank you. Even after five years, invaluable information you've shared. Thank you, Trisha. I'm glad to hear that. Um, and my voice like cracking on me. Yeah. So when it comes to wiping down the condensation, what I did is I took a plastic hanger, the kind that you get from the store and I broke off one section of it and no, hold on. I didn't break it. Did I break it? Yes. I broke off one section of it. So it was no longer of this shape. I broke off half of it. And so it had the hook on. And then I took some really absorbent cloth and I stitched it up and I rubber banded around and then I hold the handle and I take that and I just wipe the inside of the tank with that. And then I've got a, I stitched up a bunch of different of the little cloths to go on it, the absorbent cloths. And I, once I use one and it's wet, then I replace it and continue wiping. <clears throat> so that's something that you can do if you don't want to spend the money to get one. Let's see. 
She attacked the ones that she was reunited with, with supervision. That sucks. I'm so sorry about that, Jean. Yeah, maybe give it a mirror. That's not a bad idea. Actually, a mirror might help you know whether it's going to attack or not. My one crazy PMS crab is forever in his single bedroom apartment and he loves it. Yeah. So, I mean, if it doesn't want to be with other people then or other crabs, then it's probably going to be fine. Probably just give it stuff to climb on and all that. Okay. So if anybody doesn't have any final questions, I am going to go ahead and end now. My voice is shot. It is shot. Uh, and thank you guys, everybody for coming. If you're interested in the book that I wrote that has the hermit crabs in it, I'll probably, it's called when, uh, falling for Dr. Winters. It's a medical romance. Um, I might put that in the group. I don't know. I don't, I'm not, I don't want to be like, Hey, buy my book. Um, but, um, I'm not allowed to give it away for free because it is, um, in Amazon, there's select prop there, whatever you guys don't need to hear all about the author stuff. My woes is being an author, but anyway, so you guys are welcome. Thank you again so much for coming. And if you want the slide, send me an email and I will get that to you. Um, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye. <laughs> okay. I'm leaving now. I'm leaving. You're welcome. Everybody. Goodbye. Leave. <laughs>